uh, now we have received the vibrations from you. Now, how uh, Dr. Avi? Let us see how Dr. Avs is going to treat us with the vibration. Dr. Avs, as uh, as uh, Dr. Ramuthi said, we have uh, made the second video also so that the uh, audience can understand much better the how the uh, Vedas are being recited. The people who are reciting. They have to undergo training for more than 10 years or 12 years like our postgraduate students with the so precision point with uh, not only uh, learning and with their personal life also, they have to adhere to various norms in the curricula. This is our traditional methods. It is coming through thousands of years. That is the beauty of our Indian culture and Indian tradition. Now over to Dr. Avs. We are eager to listen to you how we are going to use this vibration to our advantage. Yeah. Um, Sai Ram. First of all, we have listened to the excellence explicitly expressed in Vedas and vibration. I think I must be very thankful to Prime Point Srinivasan for giving me this opportunity and this team because he has very clearly stated that vibration is felt and it is not to be seen. Where do we stand in science? Now it's very clear that we all know it starts, stems from the awareness. I'm aware of my vibrations. When you are aware of my vibrations, is there a scientific data to give it? That's where we lack it. Because it's very, very, Schrodinger always said, becoming is conscious, but being is unconscious. In other words, when you start getting into the physiology of the brain of any standards, I have to come from the top below or bottoms up. I want to go from the top up. The topmost portion in the human brain is awareness. Awareness is coming beyond science. It's beyond thought. Because when we look at the awareness at the present point of juncture, we do not know what is awareness scientifically documented. This awareness leads to intellect. Intellect is also a part of it. It's not beyond science. It's not beyond science. It's beyond science. From the intellect, we get into the mind. Mind, we are just conquering it because mind is a web of thoughts. So when you apply the thought mechanisms, thought has got two components. One is, of course, we have already discussed this point, but I want to repeat it once again here for reinforcing our idea. The two component is the temporal sequence of thought and as well as spatial. The present day science touches only the spatial sequence. It cannot touch the temporal sequence of thought because we cannot identify where does it come from. It could come from our brain or it could come from outside. Now, the concept of this thought is also a movement. Thought is also a vibration. This vibration and movement giving rise inside the brain leads to the function of the mind, which acts on the brain, brain acts on the body, body and the environment. Now, when you look at all the five special senses, it is the projection of our awareness. With an example, I'll just tell you, if you want to really look into the science of the vision, vision is an input by which we have an eye. In the eye, we have a lens. As for the science, if there is an object in front of the lens, then the image should form behind the lens. That means we should only see behind, but we all see in front. What is the reason? It is only because your image is definitely formed in the occipital lobe inverted and our consciousness projects the image in space. In other words, my consciousness merges into yours and then the light is the component. Without light, we cannot see. So the light at the present point of time, our vision is very, very limited. We are really going to see only a particular frequency of vibrations of the objects. There are three solid states of vibration. And 
the most important thing from all these functions when we understood what is consciousness i think somebody is that consciousness is the trick of the memory and self awareness is an illusion of language but you must remember the most important point in consciousness is the vibration of or the resonance is a main mechanism of consciousness it's a vibration and the frequency it's believed that the thalamus which is the center in the base of the skull base of the brain connects to the cortex this thalamocortical projection has got a particular frequency that decides our consciousness and awareness this consciousness is a brain i am not talking about the original universal consciousness all things in the world are constantly in motion in other words the entire universe is in motion and this universe in motion is because of the vibration and the movement and when you look at the enlightenment i am just talking about the enlightenment people have looked at it and it is the highest energy with a cycle of more than 700 so if a person could develop into that 700 cycles he is in the enlightened state the greatest what i would call it as at that point of time it is the greatest expansion of energy that he can feel it and hence is extremely what we can call it as happiness but when you transcend yourself from the enlightenment into the joy the happiness the frequency is only about 540 and if you remember this joy or happiness is also expanding in nature and the vibration with the movement and hence you are able to appreciate the joy very well and that is 540 when a person gets angry then his frequency is 150 when a person gets 150 frequency in the vibration sense when he gets angry then definitely he doesn't expand but the anger produced in the human body has got a direct effect on the system on the physiology of the body a person who is very late above 70 years should not get angry at all because of this vibrations which are very low then the function of the arteries the function of the most intricate because the nature is endowed with 17 special senses in the body people who are interested in this chapter should get into psi 17 but we all think there are only five special senses but there are 17 special senses which are operative in our body which are making our sense very well and all of them operate to the help of only vibration now some people said if you are going to give for the emotion the frequency what about the body of the human being do we have a particular frequency and the people came up with this idea that human body frequency is around 3 to 17 the vertical vibration of the human body when the movement occurs is 68 it is so slow it is almost like said that you don't feel it otherwise everybody really have a vertical vibration 6 to 8 times per second and you must remember that whenever a person gets a frequency from the originally we have already fixed that happiness and enlightenment at 70 but anybody who has got a vibration of 440 below that means he is going to get angry and second immediately there is a destructive element coming in our human system it can cause disruption it can cause disharmony it can cause disunity but if you get the disharmony of this vibration coming in 440 you are likely to develop the diseases you are likely to develop if not a even the tendency for you to have a war in your mind and then that can translate into a real war if it is going to come into a king or into our presidents of the country or the prime minister now if you look into the any chandra textbooks you can just go to the google god and then there are so many ways of getting the 12 ways to get the vibration increased and then what in terms of brain when you come into vibration what does it do it is very clearly stated that when you do a whole body vibration techniques that have been available in the universe now and this whole body vibration what it does it is able to in, increase the attention span and second it is also increases the inhibition so that your inhibitory input is not allowed so that 
the pain conditions. For example, they have to reach the brain through the spinal cord. So if you have a vibration inhibition increase, then the inhibition can start in the spinal cord or it can get stopped at the thalamus. And finally, if it goes into the brain, then you definitely perceive the pain. And hence, the vibration is very useful in that. If you don't get this vibration properly, this we call it as a HAVS. It's called hand arm vibration syndrome. This you can see in people when they are highly tensed up in anger. They will say, my hand is shivering. My arm is shivering. But they will only say, you won't see the vibration. It will be very, very clear in you that the patient is not faking. He's not psychiatric. It is a truth that he has got the vibration which he is able to feel it. And this syndrome is very, very good. They also say DOMS. DOMS is a delayed onset of muscle, especially very, very severe pain. This can come in people when their bodily vibrations are reduced or when you give the same, because in, in life, anything that is excess gives you a problem. Anything that is reduced, you give also get a problem. There is a therapeutic window for all the vibration sense. And this vibrations, when it is used ideally, this is a very, very good use. What is the neurotransmitter for this? It is very, very clearly stated that the human beings are practically working on three neurotransmitters. All the other transmitters God has given, or nature has given. One is called the dopamine, which is the central of the neurotransmitter, which plays a crucial role for motivation to movement. This dopamine in turn acts and inhibits the noradrenaline adrenaline system so that you don't get fired up easily. The third one is acetylcholine, which is very, very important for our memory system. So, when you look at it, this dopamine and as well as serotonin, that is pre precursor for the adrenaline, noradrenaline, they are very, very useful hormones for us to be happy. This happiness should come spontaneously. And this happiness will come when you do, according to what the Shruti of Vedas, what they say, you go into this mantras when you split it into one and one, one and two, two and two, one, then you can literally see the peace settling up in your brain. Awareness, since it's being in the level of the superior consciousness level, people ask for the very difficult. It is like a sweet. It's like an anger. It's like a happiness. It's like sadness. I can't just tell you how happy you are. I can't tell you how sad you are, even with the latest scientific equipment. But I can see it in your face. The face is the expression of your mind. And hence, we always say the dopamine and serotonin are the two neurotransmitters which are very, very useful for us to get the happiness. Then what is the other extreme for vibrations to be produced? Then you find the steroids. If the steroids are the stress hormones, which always comes when, whenever a person gets, whenever a person is stressed, it's very clearly stated that when a person is stressed, you need the steroids. Stress, spontaneous stress, or stress from the mind or from the disorders. So the vibration, basic vibration should come from the steroids. So these are the main three uh, neurotransmitters which are really holding and decoding the mystery of the brain. But some people say the decoding of the muscle, it also results in the brain shakes. This is a very uh, common expression we see in patients when they say, in brain, this is a, these are all certain expressions which we listen and we group them under the dizziness, the doctor's dilemma. This dizziness is nothing but a vibration inside the eight in of output. This vibration produces. One must understand very clearly that the eighth nerve, the vestibular nuclei, is one of the oldest nuclei in the human brain, which connects to the entire human body of the system. It connects to all the lobes, the vestibular nucleus connecting itself into the frontal thinking brain, parietal sensory brain, temporal listening and as well as speaking brain and occipital the seeing brain. So that when you stimulate these areas, vibrations is very useful. We always use in vibration therapy or we can use even the, 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 the especially distal water therapy in the, in the ear if you do it, people who have schizophrenia with very classical delusion, they get their delusions reduced. We have proved that whenever a person gets a very severe chronic pain syndrome, when you do this vestibular stimulation by vibration technique, you find that the pain goes. 
above all now the present day thinking you know everybody passes through the parkinson disease in the parkinson disease if you use a whole body vibration we have now realized even in parkinson disease which is characterized by tremor which is a high frequency rate and then the rigidity a kinesia and then the postural responses of which when you use a vibratory sense in them they get an excellent benefit now people are concentrating on how to stimulate your brain by whole body and then the brain they are stimulating it after all the stimulation is also a part of vibration inside the nuclei the whole neurons are in constant state of vibration and it's always believed that the neuron inside the brain when they get activated you can just is almost like what we can see no longer in our days we used to say this particular area connects this area now we know we are all talking about circuit theory just like electrical circuits we are all talking about the circuit theory of the brain we no longer talk about a area is causing this now why i am giving this particular portion first in the vibration in the brain because these are all the facts and the vibration being a sense which is more often felt than seen then this same vibration is present in each and every when you get into the nucleus the vibration is absent in proton you can call that at a sat whereas when it comes into electron it is moving it has got a vibration so that you can call it as a chit this sat and chit are absolutely essential for the normal function of the cell when you don't get this movement when you when you don't get this movement from the electron it cannot take place in the oxidation reduction reaction and hence you cannot get transmitted and the same thing when you say still the wonder of wonder is what is really troubling the neurologist is this whenever a vibration gets into that the brain you know it gets into a neuro signals and this neuro signals becomes a neurotransmitter action this connection how is it being done and the second one is when you form the structure itself in the basic anatomy when you want to form an enzyme the nucleus which is in the center portion that actually produces the mechanism called dna and this dna by a vibration constantly produces and it becomes an rna and this comes out to the message which we still do not know whether it is a chemical message whether it is an electrical message or whether it is electrochemical message because fundamentally the energy and the free, what we can call it vibration vibration produces the energy or energy produces the vibration this cause and effect you cannot apply it to a main vibration because when you dissect all the un- living and non living things to the entire point of vibratory nature very very difficult because you cannot say why the earth came into existence in vibration i can give you its frequency pattern but i cannot say why it vibrates when you ask a repeater why in science science comes to a stand still this vibrations the nature is already given for us and how to utilize it that is where the vedas came into existence i strongly believe that if you are able to produce a sound which we are now analyzing it with a ct pet science ct pet has given us a room for us to find out when you say the word a ah, where all the brains are stimulated when you say e there is one area when you say i there is an area the same thing with regard to sanskrit when you just pronounce it in the way in which if it is pronounced it is quite it's brilliance what i say is if you write anything it is leading to distortion or if it is destroyed it is not going to be continued our vedas have lived thousands of years because it has come through oral and second the oral one the vibration vibratory tone once it gets into your mind it never gets altered by the brain because brain is only an instrument where we always say that it obeys what the mind say the mind obeys because mind is a web of thought in which the first stand of thought is i exist this i fe- i feature the i consciousness which is the vibrating one every one of us in the body this gets connected to the total awareness you can call that awareness a part of universal consciousness or universal feed there are people this energy is available outside when you are able to get the energy that's what he was telling about the veda the, the whole vedic shruti and everything has come by just constant listening so we as a neurologist we don't want to give the grapheme to the child we want to give the phoneme to the child 
if you are able to give the sound first to the child then the child starts writing very well the brain listens more and there are of course is uh, people that are divided into two vibrations wise one is a listener one is a reader we let's forget about that aspect of the function but the basic main function of the brain which has got its own innate ability to vibrate it not only vibrates it's also stimulates when the heart beats it is very 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 beautiful to see with each and every beat the vibrations are transmitted to the brain and the brain vessel starts pulsating when the brain vessel starts pulsating when it produces a vibration it produces a painful input the nature has given one nucleus called trigeminal nucleus which dampens this especially the painful vibrations it doesn't reach the brain and hence you don't feel the brain whereas a migraine is follow who is going to get this which any is allowing the pain fibers to reach the brain so for him migraine this is a headache business where the vibratory treatment total body vibration has been taken beautifully for treatment of migraine and hence vibration plays a crucial role same thing with regard to any pain mechanism operating in the body it has to get cleared first in the spinal cord it has to get cleared in the periaqueductal gray inside the brain and then finally felt by the brain so the mechanism is such these vibrations are stopped at the periphery itself by means of five sensations that we are producing in our human body one is called pressure vibration position movement and as well as touch all these five factors increases the input and stops the painful fibers leaving the spinal cord and then at the level of the midbrain if the doctor is very good and if the patient has absolute uh, uh, faith in the doctor and when the doctor gives the tablet in his hand if he takes it at once the vibrations are made inside the periaqueductal gray and then the hormone is released thereby you get a pain relief at once and third is of course you have got your own will power by which you can vibrate the sentences i mean the, the circuits you can bring the vibration down and stop the pain so these sort of vibrations this entire vedas i i all believe the whole world is made of vibration and this vibration is nothing but the consciousness and this energy is literally stored in and out the nucleus just like it is present in each and every human body and every human body now i think we should be able to scientifically document this 7 to 70 what they call it as the human body frequency of 3 to 17 and the vertical movement of about 6 to 8 these are all certain facts about the vibration but i i uh, i think i have a uh, uh, how many minutes because i just wanted to highlight uh, certain areas in the human brain um, when it gets vibrated or the ct pet we have no uh, got uh, totally different areas in the brain that have come up into the, all the areas and uh, it is uh, it is always felt uh, that the pain mechanisms and uh, yoga mechanisms and then this mant- uh, mantra mantra means as he rightly pointed out man means li- thinking and then the listening and then the words mantra came mantra tantra every procedure the human is only dependent on the vibrations and hence ladies and gentlemen i have given the 20 25 minutes talk my aim her aim is if you start having your vibratory note through the meditation i would like to conclude by saying this because this is the fact of the problem this is the fact of the cure for most of the conditions and then explain how it Uh, the mechanism of the brain functions the one of the functions is the brain is the eeg the electroencephalogram and the man's alpha wave is 9 to 13 per cycles this is exactly what the sun cycles the frequency the sun rays has actually got a 9 to 13 and our human beings have got the alpha wave is only 9 to 13 and once this alpha waves once you get into meditation and the vibration of the sound that you do either by the word or by the mantras or by the shlokas ultimately it has an effect on the alpha system and the alpha starts becoming the theta the range comes down and the theta becomes delta in normal people once you reach theta you start feeling drowsy when it gets into delta that is 1 to 4 cycles per second you start sleeping whereas when you are perfect in the art of mechanism of this vibratory techniques by which you will be conscious even in your theta state and delta state and get into a state called epsilon this in epsilon state that brain waves are 1.5 to 2.5 cycles per second 
at this particular point of frequency, one can control the autonomic nervous system. He can raise the body temperature, he can lower the body temperature. He can increase the uh, uh, temperature, he can lower the temperature. And he has a absolute control on the autonomic system. Otherwise, autonomic nervous system is underly, totally as autonomic. Both sympathetic and parasympathetic system comes under control. When you still believe in vibratory techniques, then or meditate, that is, I, I mean, the med vibration is fully by slokas or by mantras or by words or by sheerly stating om. That's also a vibration. Ultimately, it acts on this system of EEG, which we can prove. Once you get into this, it is called samadhi state where people have gone into this. And the, some people, when you get into the state, how to identify at the epsilon state, you put him in, this has been demonstrated by Tibetan lamas. When you put an iced blanket on their child, absolutely no clothes, they are able to dry the iced blanket. The time taken is called the two most effect, the two more seconds that is. These are all why I'm saying it. We are now expanding our explosion. Why? Why we are able to explain? Because the man is in possession of an organ called brain, which is far advanced for the four generations later. What is the possibility? With one million fibers of the one particular track, we are controlling the entire movement of our thought, actions, and everybody. Whereas God has given, or nature has given 10 million fibers connecting the thinking brain to the smaller brain called cerebellum. The future is in process by which the human brain is going to much more advanced than the present state of mind. But I would like to just close by one thing, by just reciting what Sairam used to say, 10 to 100 years of human life. And the 10th year of life, the ego starts in any individual. The eye really blossoms into fully and then he is achieving something. Then 20, it is the duty of the parents and the teachers and the institution to give him shraddha and bhakti to him. At the age of 30, then he must have, he must be taught as a purity in thought, word, and deed. At the fourth, 40th year, at the fourth year, he must kama, hartha, bhamocha, fourth, that is, how to earn, how to spend everybody. At the age of 50 years, one should control all the five special senses which gives the real vibration. At the 60th year, then I always call it, the six enemies of the human mind must be removed. Kama, Krodha, Loba, Madha, Macharya, etc. At the 70th year of age, you become exactly like what I call it, a Saptarishi. They have got the power to come to the earth and then go back to the heaven. But same way, you can live in this world with a heavenly approach by leaving this. And the eight indicates you have the eight directions of the human human universe. And in the eight direction, there are eight gods praying to the universe of universal consciousness. You can do that. At the 90th year, you become Navagraha coming around the uh, sun. Likewise, at the 90th year, you come around the Lord God. I think at the 100th year, when 1002 becomes two zeros, then you become exactly joined with the universal consciousness. So the duality totally disappears, irrespective of what you are. And that particular point, you only have the human vibrations and the sense in the life. And that vibration will be there, whether you are there or not, because it is created by nature. I think by organizing this particular thing, I'm very, very grateful to Prime Point Srinivasan and his team. I think, but for them, my expression will not come there, but I'm really thankful because I'm literally inside my vibration is there. I was a little bit doubtful how to speak before the Dr. Ramamurthy. That's the reason why I came to brain because brain is the lowest most organ. And in the Vedas, they give least resistance to the Vedas. And they always talk about the mind because the mind is more powerful than the brain. And the mind of all the prime point people are excellent. And he is just modest by saying that he is at the lowest. No, he is at the highest, the driving force. And, uh, and above all, he has got the name of Srinivas. But Ramamurthy today has got all the both. He has got both. <laughs> he's, he's Kirti and as well as Rama. I think it was pleasure listening to you, sir. And once again, lovely time, lovely time spent. I think the 30 plus, I come to 30 plus because there should be purity in thought, purity in word, purity in action. Thank you. Namaskar. Sairam. Uh, really, really, really a grateful, uh, Dr. Javier. Wonderful oration. <laughs> but in the meanwhile, I have uh, one question. I am also having a personal question to Dr. Javier. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, but uh, we were talking about the vibrations, the Ghana vibrations and other things. To what extent, and uh, Dr. Ramamurthy showed the universal uh, sound, hum, and sound also. 
yeah. when we chant to Om, how it has got a vibration in our mind? Whether it gets synergized with the universal vibration, is it having some value? And uh, I added to that, I can also add one question has come on the chat box. Uh, one Dr. Sandhya has asked whether uh, 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 is the is the vibratory state uh, same when the listening uh, as well as the chanting both of them, and you can combine and uh, you can give a scientific uh, reasoning for that. <laughs> First, let me say we have not done the both states. We have just identified that there is a vibrating for a human body. That particular frequency I've already told you. Whether there is a vertical vibration, whether there is a total, but 68. But if we have to do this, but one thing is very certain. We have now seen that whenever you do this, the frequency is definitely coming down. In the, uh, we have no other ways of proving it because I told you the awareness is beyond science at the present point of time. You cannot prove the awareness of the vibratory technique. We may have to have some other mode by which we can get into it. But the effect of that awareness, you can definitely feel. For example, when you start saying mantras, you are definitely improving. That I gave a talk on only on yoga and meditation. There is a neurophysiology of yoga. I spoke for one hour. Each and every condition we are able to see. A person who sincerely does the, uh, especially Om recitation, there is a definite element of this frequency going up. We have proved it. Now only we have started looking at it as 440 frequency. If That is also a 440 frequency. If you look into the Google God, there you can see the 440 is a very important frequency for the human brain. So I'm taking so many sentences to you because definitely we have to do the test to say what we've seen is there. And the effect only we are seeing in all these Vedas and mantras. We cannot do it because awareness is still not understood by the human body or the human brain. It takes place in less than 50 milliseconds. At the present point of time, what we have is neurophysiological equipment is only 1,000 milliseconds old. 1,000 milliseconds. You can just imagine how it can come down to 50. And at the level of the 17 special senses, once again, it's beyond our... I mean, it's something like saying that 200 years ago, nobody would have thought about this. 200 years later, somebody may find it out. But at the present point of time, with the present knowledge, you cannot study awareness. When you cannot study awareness, you cannot study the vibrations also. But you can see the cause and effect, vibration and energy are the two acting on the matter and energy. Man who worked on 30 years for matter finally has given up his study and then said, I am not able to understand how the matter becomes energy and energy becomes a matter. Now, one thing is certain when we are talking on the Vedas and mantras, these mantras are the distilled wisdom of our great ancient rishis. We are not following that. We are, we are going to ask for the cause and effect because our human mind is cause and effect oriented. When you look into the cause and effect oriented, when it comes into the chat, the chat, 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 that is impossible for anybody to get into the train of giving cause and effect. You are only see the effect, but you cannot see the cause. That is uh, my uh, uh, reading. Uh, I always say chat is like a, uh, in terms of simple comparison, Sati is like a static energy. When the static energy converted into a movement, that is Sit, then you start getting the happiness at Anandam. So when they recite the Vedas, when you recite Om, you will get into the Ananda state well, but you can't get into the Sat state of uh, vibration because existence of this universe is in vibration. And that vibration, you can only feel it, but you cannot do it. But once you reach that sat state, then you become silent. You won't, you won't be talking like me because you have already appreciated what is truth. So, uh, sorry for giving such a long expression. To put it in one word, cause and effect, please don't expect it at the vibration level. Can I say something one line, one liner for that? Yeah, sure, sir. Yes, sir. Um, as for me, the uh, uh, state of mind or state of effect of vibration as a chanter or as a hearer 
uh, even as a chanter, if two people chant at the same time, the vibration felt by them may differ. Because depending on their con uh, concentration, depending on their uh, other worries uh, affecting their mind, depending on their age, depending on their maturity. So when two chanters, similar chanting, the state of uh, uh, vib effect, effect on the vibration may differ, then uh, we cannot definitely say the chanting and hearer, the chanter and hearer, definitely it will be different. Coming to that mantra, Om. Om is called monosyllable mantra. It is uh, it, it, when it uh, uh, when it is chanted continuously, definitely its effect is much much higher than all the Gayatri mantra, the other mantras also. If, when when a guru gives sannyasam to a sishya, Om Pranava mantra and its meaning is the one which is given in as initiation, mantrobadesam. Okay, that is the importance. Further, uh, further, uh, we will uh, we we have uh, we can talk continue to talk about for hours. <laughs> okay, I, for the time being, this is the main. Then my my take in this. Thank you, sir. Thank you, PPS, for the opportunity. It was wonderful. Uh, thank you, thank you, Doctor Yavis. Yavis was telling something in between. Sorry, uh, no, Doctor Yavis was telling something in between. No, no, no. I'm no. I'm sorry. What I wanted to say was I concur with him, Professor Ramamurthy, that Om is a primordial of is a primordial vibration from which the whole world has evolved. This Om was so. When you look at it in the beginning, the word was there, and the word was with the God, and the word was God. So Om was the vibration. Vibration was the name with the God, and the God was nothing but the Om. So. This is what they come I in mean, it from the other thing they said in the other part by people. In the beginning, there was there was a word, and the word was the God, and the word was God. They replaced that word for the oh, Om is the real word. And uh, there are people who are uh, saying that if you realize what he said already, the person who realizes becomes Dakshina Murti, he keeps quiet. The person like me who have not understood what is the world, why the vibration started, how the vibration started. How we came into the universe, how we turned. I think the word Sachidanandam and the, then the eye destruction and finally uh, Shiva's Kriba, all the five components are the Brahman. I think I would say that uh, I think the alphabets that cannot describe it. But we are trying to do this. This we are trying. We are now doing the work. The results I'm not supposed to say. But when you do your yaga, when you do mantras, we are studying the effect on the brain. We cannot say that is producing the sound. Each and every sound, which area in the brain is being activated, we are studying. Hopefully, unfortunately, this one year of this, we are not able to continue this. By sheer yeah, mantras, what are the changes that are taking place in this? I think the book, uh, people who are interested in uh, reading the book, I think the best book I would say is Majesty King Nadar Ram, I think. I would just show, uh, please show this, sir. Please show this on screen, yeah, sir. Please show this on screen. Um, I think I, I'm not getting it. Uh, no, it is not seen. It is not seen. Yeah, this actually book is Her Majesty King Nadar Ram, Expressions of Veda and the Vedic Literature. He has touched the human physiology. He has given the explanations and it has written the book. He is a PhD and uh, he's come from the uh, teacher, you know, the uh, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. He was the only person in the whole world to be given weight in gold in US for his work on the physiology of the human body compared with the Vedic literature and given every aspect of this Vedic function. This itself is an excellent book and uh, he has written it. I mean, it is a yeoman book. It, it runs through about 600 pages and this book gives you a comprehensive idea about our old ancient Sanskrit literature has literally given life. And I think we should propagate this physiology in our teaching system where it should be included as a, one of the portions where how the Vedas have touched the physiology. We are not crossing the physiology. We are not saying opposite to the physiology, but we are saying that we have said it already 2000 years ago. That's a point.
Uh, sir, we are closing now. In the one last question, within one minute, I want your answer, Dr. Avia. Whether yes. any other foreign universities are doing or have done any research on this uh, vibrations of Vedas and how it has no, an yeah, impact that, on their That's brain. a lot of work. There are a lot of work from Washington School. It has come from the other area. They are doing the vibrations because they have got the instrument to measure it. Unfortunately, in India, we have not yet caught up. The basic sciences research in India is lacking. But we are excellent in our clinical observation. So I always say, to put it in simple word, our sense operates on the, what they call it, observation, recording, common sense we have got. We have got a lovely common sense resulting in a clinical sense and the therapeutic sense. But we have to have a research sense in basic sciences. Just like the health, we have to have a basic sciences which has been done. And we have a very rich knowledge, knowledge and then the experiment. I always say science, science ends and philosophy starts. No, science blends with philosophy beautifully. I think our country is the only going to be a beacon of light in another 15 years. Touching the ancient wisdom and giving the practical side uh, of uh, our ancient wisdom into our human people. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Yeah. Science blends with Indian philosophy. Science blends with Indian philosophy. That is the key message that you have given to us, I guess. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ramurthy. That, thank you, Dr. Evs, And uh, thanks to all the people, though we have only a selected invited people for, uh, uh, for this show. And uh, we, are, uh, uh, we have already recorded, putting it up in the YouTube tomorrow or day after after editing. And we are also covering it as a cover story in our uh, July issue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, all. Uh, God bless you all. And uh, Jai Hind. Jai Hind. <laughs> Thank you.